and the name of Christ welcome to worship. As we gather for worship, I encourage you to light a candle as a symbol of God's continuing presence in your life and ours. How do we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength? By loving and caring for our neighbors. Easier said than done. What if I don't like my neighbor? What if my neighbor doesn't like me? Our gospel for today is the story of the Good Samaritan. As one of the most famous stories of Jesus, it's also a story of radical love, helping and caring for someone beyond typical expectations. How do we care for one another? In each of us lives the knowledge that we do not survive this life alone. We need connection. We need community. We need one another. As we go about our days, awaken us to the needs and fears of others. Sharpen our senses to notice those who are struggling. Soften our hearts to serve even when we don't understand. Move us from lives of self-interest and isolation to communities of care concern and hope. Teach us to acquire less and give more. Teach us to share generously. Teach us to love beyond understanding. May God, who gives us the will to serve, grant us the strength to do the work. Amen. Amen. prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. So the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you 
It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Read responsibly Psalm 25. To you, o Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame. Nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me to your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice. And teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies the holy gospel according to luke glory to you O lord jesus then a lawyer stood up to test jesus teacher he said what must i do to inherit eternal life he said to him what is written in the law what do you read there he answered you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and your neighbor as yourself and he said to him you have given the right answer do this and you will live but wanting to justify himself he asked jesus and who is my neighbor jesus replied a man was going down from jerusalem to jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place where he saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, and poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the inn camper, innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robber? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This has always been a fascinating story to me and one of my favorite in Scripture. And I have to admit that I am one of those church people who heard this as a very young child. I can almost imagine sitting in a Sunday school class, and maybe this even happened, and having a teacher like a teacher we have here who's raised up a multitude of kids named Miss Joy. And I can just imagine her saying, what would you do if you saw that man? And I can just imagine a young girl, maybe my wife, maybe my daughter saying, I think I would have thrown up. We get confronted when we see blood, when we see things that challenge us and we're afraid to deal with them. But there's even more to this story than just that human reality. In biblical times, a lawyer wasn't a lawyer like we know a lawyer today who would know secular law. A lawyer was a student of religious law and would interpret it for the nation. It was a theocratic or a God-centered nation and everything flowed from God. And the kings were viewed as agents of God whether for good or bad, they were agents of God. So this lawyer knew the law, and he knew that it said to love your neighbor as yourself. And the trick question, of course, is who's your neighbor? Early English, 
even early Hebrew, a neighbor is just someone who is close by. So your neighbor is maybe the homeless man on the corner every morning when you're going to work and you're pouring out of your neighborhood and he's a veteran and he's saying, I'm hungry. Your neighbor is someone across the street who drives you crazy because he doesn't pick up his trash when the trash can comes, when the trash men come. The neighbor is right there. But even more profound than this story, and we might miss it, particularly if we weren't people who grew up in a church and knew the background, Samaria was an ancient kingdom, and a Samaritan was an ancient group of people. They were people who originally were part of the Jewish tradition, but after Solomon, the kingdom of Israel was divided in two, and they were the northern kingdom, and eventually they were parted off to exile. And the only ones who were left there were those people who had almost no redeeming value. The humblest of the people, they were left. And over time, they intermarried with other people, and when the Jews of the southern kingdom came back from exile, they would have nothing to do with a Samaritan. As a matter of fact, somebody traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho would probably go out of their way just to avoid walking through Samaria. And sad to say, the thought might have gone through the head of the Jewish community that the only good Samaritan was a dead Samaritan. All of us have heard those kinds of thoughts at times. And they're incredibly powerful and incredibly negative, but it's human nature. The Levite was a temple official, and he didn't want to touch that poor man laying in the, in the side of the road, because then he wouldn't be ritually clean, and he couldn't serve in the temple. And the same with the scribe. He didn't want to touch him, because he wouldn't be ritually clean either. Who gives comfort? An outcast, someone from a community that scorned for generations. And if you noticed closely in that scripture, two things. First, the word good Samaritan isn't there, because that would never even cross their mind. And second, that lawyer couldn't even bring himself to say the Samaritan. He said the one who showed him mercy. I read this passage to the men's group that meets here on Tuesday mornings, and I asked the men what they thought of it, and several of them said the same thought that most people have. It's kind of a universal thought. I hope I will be strong enough to be like that Samaritan, to minister to people. And yes, that's part of Jesus' point, that we need to minister to people. I think his point also is that compassion comes from everybody, and it doesn't matter what your race, your color, your ethnicity, your sexual orientation. As a child of God, you're called to minister to others, and we're called to accept that ministry. That's part of the hook, to be able to accept the ministry of someone that you're not comfortable with. Powerful, powerful story, and it's universal in our culture to the point that nearly every law, every state law, codifies the notion of a good Samaritan. Colorado has a good Samaritan law. If you're acting in good conscience and trying to render assistance to someone, you will be held blameless. Every state in the Union has a law similar to that. But I want to turn this story on its head because I think it's even more important that we look at another perspective than the notion that each of us needs to love our neighbor no matter who it is. Brothers and sisters, we're the one in the ditch. And Jesus is the one who brings us comfort. Jesus, who could be our enemy, just the way the Samaritan was imagined as an enemy, because Jesus could hold us accountable for all of our sins. But God in Christ doesn't do that. God in Christ comes to us and says, rise up, I will hear you, heal you, and I will restore you. 
Hopefully that's what we experience in worship together. And hopefully that's what we experience when we walk outside of worship and that we go with the face of Christ to minister to other people. Jesus is the good Samaritan. Jesus is the one who heals us of our aches, of our pains, of our health issues, of worry about COVID, no matter what the litany is. I just invite you to think about that beloved story and remember that ultimately Jesus is the one who brings healing. And for that healing, we can all say thanks be to God. Love and serve the Lord. 
Thanks be to God.